Hi everybody and welcome to the third part of our triple video set on the on the English relative clauses. In this part we are talking about the different types of relative clauses and we start with the so-called non-defining relative clause. Let me give you a definition and then show you some examples. Non-defining relative clauses add information about a noun whose identity we already know. Here's a sentence. Las Vegas, comma, whose lights can be seen from space, comma, is a center of entertainment. So, whose lights can be seen from space is your non-defining relative clause. It gives you information about a noun whose identity you already know, about Las Vegas. It's a city that we know. So, Las Vegas, comma, whose lights can be seen from space, comma, is a center of entertainment. Non-defining relative clause. And the second um, definition I have here, non-defining relative clauses, they comment on a situation. This is the second which that we had in part two. And here's your sentence. She couldn't read, comma, which surprised me. The which here actually refers back to the whole sentence she couldn't read. So which surprised me again is a non-defining relative clause and there is a comma in between the main clause and the relative clause. The next one here, Mr. Simpson, comma, who we met yesterday, comma, seems very nice. Again, we're adding information about a noun whose identity, Mr. Simpson, is already established. The name is here. The identity is here. So we need a non-defining relative clause. Mr. Simpson, comma, whom we met yesterday, who or whom are both correct here. You remember this from part two. Seems very nice. And the important thing is that non-defining relative clauses are actually separated from the main clause by a comma. Don't forget that it's very important. Let's continue with the defining relative clauses. Here's your definition. Defining relative clauses add information to define or identify the person or thing we're talking about. In the non-defining relative clause, the person, the person's identity was already established. In this case, we, it, it's not. So we need a defining relative clause to add information about the person or thing we're talking about. A seaman is somebody who works on a ship. The relative clause here, who works on a ship, is necessary. It's defining the somebody which refers back to a seaman. A seaman is somebody who works on a ship, adding information or identifying the person we're talking about. The people who live in Scotland are called Scots. Again, a defining relative clause. The people who live in Scotland. We need some information about the people. They live in Scotland. That's important. And another example here. I remember the restaurant in which or where we first met. Again, we have a thing here. That's the restaurant and the in, in which or where we first met. This is adding information to the restaurant. Okay, The restaurant in itself has, doesn't have a lot of information in which we first met. That's important. So we need a defining relative clause. And very important, you see this here, defining relative clauses are not separated from the main clause by a comma. And the non-defining relative clauses, that's where you use the comma. Defining relative clauses, no comma, please. And now we have the so-called contact clauses. They come right out of the defining relative clauses and this is your definition. Contact clauses are defining relative clauses, remember, no comma, without a relative pronoun. So there is no relative pronoun, it's left out. The only important thing is that the left out pronoun must be the object of the subordinate clause of your relative clause because a subject you have to have it so it must be the object. Let's have a look at the sentence. 
The man you saw at the party was Giorgio Armani. Your complete sentence is the man who you saw at the party was Giorgio Armani. So you is your subject, saw is your verb, and the who, the left out pronoun, is the object. The man you saw at the party was Giorgio Armani. It's a contact clause. It's a defining relative clause. No comma, please. The people we met are very nice. The people who we met are very nice. We here is your subject, met is your verb, and the left out pronoun who is your object. And this is the bike I bought yesterday. Again, the object, the which, is left out. The bike which I bought yesterday, it's gone. How do I know it's the object? Well, that's easy. I is the subject here because the verb bought comes right behind. So it's object, subject, verb, and the object which is left out. And when the object pronoun is missing, can be left out, then we call this defining relative class a contact class because it actually makes contact right away with the main clause without the pronoun in between. The man you saw at the party was Giorgio Armani. The people we met are very nice. And this is the bike I bought yesterday. Contact classes. All right. And then again, you want to remember there is no comma with the defining relative clause and Contact clauses are, by definition, defining relative clauses. Now we're almost through. There's just a little thing I want to point out to you. I wanted to have a look at those sentences that I have for you here. And then notice the difference in meaning. German students who don't know English very well often like to spend their holidays in England. Let me read this to you again. German students who don't know English very well often like to spend their holidays in England. The who here means only the German students who don't know English very well like to spend their holidays in England. Well, I think everybody agrees with me here. Let's listen to the sentence again. German students who don't know English very well often like to spend their holidays in England. Here is the same sentence. All I did is putting a comma in. German students who don't know English very well, often like to spend their holidays in England. Now the meaning has totally changed. Let me read this out to you again. German students who don't know English very well, often like to spend their holidays in England. Okay, that comma in there, actually it's two commas, totally changes the meaning. And in this case, the meaning is all German students don't know English very well and thus like to spend their holidays in England. First sentence, German students who don't know English very well often like to spend their holidays in England, only the ones that don't know English very well. Second sentence, German students who don't know English very well often like to spend their holidays in England, all of them. The putting in the commas actually changed the meaning totally 